so uh, in chapter third, we uh, authors start with the it's all about linear regression. So we set some learning objectives. Uh, we want to perform linear regression, uh, starting with single predictor variable. Uh, we want to estimate uh, errors about the uh, regression coefficients. Uh, evaluate how good is the model. Uh, we want to then try and perform linear regression on multiple predictor variables. Uh, oh, because there are multiple predictor variables, we want to check out how is relative importance of uh, each variable. Uh, also try out if there are any interaction effects uh, in case of multiple linear regression. Uh, we then try to perform linear regression. Uh, till now, they only show uh, quantitative vari predictor variables. Then they also mention about uh, qualitative uh, predictor variables. The, those are, get, we can say, category values. Uh, then uh, they try to model a non linearity direction relationship uh, using polynomial regression. So we transform the uh, predictor variables and uh, try to fit the model. Uh, uh, try to identify non-linearity in the data set. And uh, in the end, they compare the linear regression models with uh, a non-parametric model like gain and regression. Uh, so initially they start with, uh, we would like to answer these questions. Uh, uh, the data set mainly they focus is the advertising data set. Uh, it's about uh, uh, sales and uh, the predictor variables are uh, TV, radio or newspaper uh, advertising budget. Uh, so first question we want to answer whether there is any kind of relationship between advertising budget and sales. Uh, if there is some relationship, how strong is it? Uh, does the knowledge of one of them or couple of them give all the information about the sales? Uh, if uh, it's not all the variable, which media are more associated with the uh, sales? Uh, then uh, we try to maybe quantify how large is the association uh, among those uh, between uh, different mediums and sales. Uh, we also want to try to predict any future sales based on the media value, media budget value. Uh, many times we assume uh, linear regression is a good assumption, uh, but uh, in real life, uh, the actual function might not be the linear. Then in that case, where we might try and transform the predictor or the response variable and try to fit the linear regression on that. Um, and also try to find out, as mentioned earlier, are, are there any interaction effect? Uh, so this would be saying something like if I have 100,000 of budget, uh, does it make sense to just assign it to one of them or uh, assigning a 50, 50,000 to two of them might also add the synergy effect and increase the sales even more. So this is the basic, uh, linear regression, simple linear regression, we start with uh, one predictor variable, uh, response variable. This is uh, like our high school equation of a line. Uh, B, beta zero could be thought of an in intercept and beta one as a slope. Uh, we say it's approximately modeled by because uh, there is a normal error with some mean zero. That was uh, one of the assumption. So that's why it's uh, saying it's approximately modeled by this equation. Uh, we use, we have a bunch of data and we use that data to, uh, so here beta zero and beta one are the two unknowns. So we want to estimate those uh, to fit uh, our model well. And we use the data to uh, estimate those. So whenever something is estimated, uh, they use the hat as a nomenclature. So it's, uh, beta hat and y hat. So that's the estimated value from the model, for the model and from the model. Uh, this is one of the example, uh, the ordinary least square fit for uh, TV budget versus sales. And uh, it looks like this. Uh, they also point out that it's uh, 
overestimating sales here uh, but otherwise it's uh, errors are on the both side of the regression line uh, so this is just a visualization Okay. Um, so this is the equation as earlier mentioned is uh, the error term. This error terms, it, we can think of as catch or linear regression. It's also not true in real life. Uh, there may, might be many predictors which are not included, uh, which would uh, work towards finding out what's the sales. And there could be some measurement errors. So all of those things could be catching to the single epsilon term. Uh, now we need some metric to quantify and uh, to quantify what kind of model is good. So they start with, uh, we go with the residual, residual standard error. So that's uh, difference between uh, actual Y and Y hat. Um, that's our estimated value and square that uh, I, okay, I, did I miss one? Yeah, I missed that, yeah, sorry. So yeah, these are the, first they define what's the residual sum of squares. So it's, uh, this is the value for each yi, uh, the actual value of yi, uh, the estimated value of yi, uh, we square those values and sum them. So in a way, actually we are uh, squaring this horizontal uh, length of this horizontal, vertical lines uh, and summing that up for all the points in the data. Uh, if we set this to the RSS and uh, we try to uh, use calculus and uh, set, uh, find out what's uh, beta zero and beta one value, which would minimize the RSS we would get this beta one and beta zero. Uh, uh, here X at and Y at a sample means. Um, this is also visualization of the fit. So this is our, we can think of as our loss function, the, the RSS score. Uh, and these are the different values of beta one and beta zero and uh, at the bottom of uh, the minimum value of RSS would be our beta one and beta zero uh, put as a contours. Uh, in uh, this red dot is the minimum value, which would be the setting of beta zero and beta one, which would minimize the RSS. So this would give us, so we can say we have performed the linear regression with single predictor variable. Um, let me know if, are there any questions till now? Any comments? Okay. Uh, so yeah, we discuss about the catch-all error term. Uh, the RSE is the, kind of uh, square root of RSS uh, divided by number of uh, uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, so that's uh, equation for that. Uh, now we have co uh, coefficient for our uh, uh, linear regression, but that's based on uh, one sample of the data. So we also want to try to find out how good are those uh, coefficients. So, uh, to do that, we try to find out standard error of the those coefficients. And uh, if we uh, work out the equation, it would end up with this equation where this is the square of standard error for beta zero and beta one. Uh, here, we would get this if uh, there are a couple of assumptions which would, which, which would be assumption of linear regression as well that uh, they call it homoscedasticity. So the variance is common across all the errors and the errors are uncorrelated. Uh, we can use this standard errors to find out 95% uh, or 
99% confidence intervals. Uh, so this, this would be the equation. So we can check whether our, uh, this would give us a two values. Uh, and if it's very wide, that means our standard error, our error is very wide. Uh, if it's uh, concentrated, it's a small range. So it's a, it would be a good thing. But there is one more consideration whether uh, it includes zero or not. Uh, that would come in. Uh, that would also come in the hypothesis testing. Uh, but uh, they also mentioned that uh, uh, if here the standard error is inversely proportional with x i minus x bar. So if our xi's are spread out, uh, this would increase the value of the denominator. And that would be a good thing. So our standard errors would be low. So if we are designing ourselves, uh, uh, we would like to uh, try to find out uh, axis, which uh, try to predict, try to gather a data which where axis are spread out. And it's also kind of, uh, intuitive from this graph. If our dat data was just this area, our slope can move around uh, too much, but if it's spread out, uh, it fixes the slope a little bit. So yeah, uh, that's about the standard errors. Um, now, next they talk about um, hypothesis testing. Uh, so, Oh, we have come up with a model, uh, but we want to find out whether there is some relationship or not, whether uh, th there could be a case, the beta zero is, uh, beta one is zero, but uh, we got a sample such that it sh it's showing some relationship, but it's uh, not actually there, or it's very minute in, if we had the access to the population data. Uh, so this checks if there is some relationship or not. And I am not sure very much how this uh, works, but uh, they say that if uh, there was no relationship, then this uh, value would uh, follow a T distribution with the N minus two degree of freedom. Um, N minus two, I guess, because we, uh, uh, estimated two of the parameters, so in de decreasing the degree of freedom. And uh, if that's the case, then we use this T value and uh, check maybe on some software like R, R usually shows by default or can look up on some T table and check if it's, uh, what's the P value for that. So if P value would, would be considered as it's, uh, how likely are we to observe this uh, T value or extreme uh, T value than this one if there was no relationship uh, and this was just due to the chance. And uh, if values are smaller than 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, then we can say it's pretty rare. And uh, this would show up also in the constructed uh, the confidence level. So if confidence level includes zero in that, then we are less confident that, uh, that there might be a case when uh, there is a chance that beta one is zero. Uh, I think I can pause here for if there are any questions, comments, uh, anyone wants to give more detail on how this we can be sure that this is the follows a T distribution. Okay. It's a bit confusing Hi. for me, but I'm, I'm following. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is the. Now, again, uh, earlier there was a discussion about uh, assessing the accuracy of the coefficient. Now, we are trying to assess the accuracy of our model itself. Uh, we can use our same old RSE, which we saw a couple of slides back, uh, but there are some caveats with that. Uh, it provides an absolute measure of lack of fit of the model of the data, uh, model to the data, um, and it's measured in the units of Y. So it's 
we can't say that uh, RSC of uh, 0.99 is a good result. Uh, it's not that easy to come up with what's good and not good. We can compare models with each other, uh, but uh, not easy to reason about what's a good RSC value. So that's why we come up with uh, another, uh, they come up with another statistic called R square. It's, uh, so RSS is the residual sum of squares. Now TSS, we can think TSS as a variance in uh, RY. So this is just uh, uh, YI minus Y head square and just some of them. So if our R square is pretty close to one, we can say that uh, our model is uh, um, is uh, showing is explaining the variance well uh, in y uh, just compared to the very simple model. So this could be think of as a simple model. So we assume that uh, we don't we don't have any predictors. So what would be the simplest model? We just take the mean of all the y values. And that would be the uh, most simple model if we just have values of y. Uh, so yeah, it just compares that. And yeah, this value could be at most one. Um, so th this value has some uh, upper bound. So it's easier to compare with uh, what, what could be a good value of R square statistic. Uh, they also say that uh, it can be shown that uh, R square is uh, square of the Pearson's correlation coefficient uh, in case of simple linear regression when we just have one predictor variable. This R square is the R square that we see on Excel spreadsheets plots, right? I guess so but uh, so uh, in r i have seen when we print the model or uh, it does show the r square there but i'm not very sure about uh, excel square sheet but also this pearson's correlation coefficient is also called small r so mm -hmm. but others can confirm mm, okay can you, i don't understand your question so so it's possible uh, to calculate R using the Excel? No, no, no. I was asking that when we have a, have some plots like scatter plots on Excel spreadsheets and we can have the R square value. And oh. I mean, they say that um, R square should be as close as possible to one. So if it's the same, it means that the error is as small as possible, right? If, so it, if, it, make it, it makes it uh, consistent to me. Like I suppose it's the, the same R square, but I wanted to ask. If it's a scatter plot, isn't that just Pearson R instead of R square? I, think I guess, right. Yeah, it's that, that might be the Pearson's correlation coefficient, uh, which just tries to find yeah. out whether our more two variables are uh, linear in uh, mm -hmm. each linear to each other or not. Rose, you had. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think it is possible hi. to, um, in the options for uh, okay. uh, scatter plot in Excel, you can click an option to display R squared on the yes. chart. And that is this R squared. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, so now we come, we, we tried with uh, simple linear regression, uh, but e even in our uh, sales data, we had uh, three predictor variables. So we might want to try out uh, multiple linear regression. So the model assumption in that case is uh, just an extension of uh, simple linear regression. We just add uh, other predictors and we can have up to some pre-predictors and same the uh, error conditions. Uh, 
the, there is so oh, i didn't talk about the Impl uh, interpretation of betas in case of simple linear regression, but if it was just a simple linear regression, uh, the beta would be considered as a, if there was a single unit increase in uh, X, uh, how much unit increase in Y, uh, th th there would be, uh, if there is any association there, uh, but that's not uh, straightforward in case of, uh, multiple uh, linear regression because there are multiple variables. So we can say that uh, beta J on average uh, as an average effect on Y of uh, if there is a one unit increase in XJ holding all the other predictors fixed. So uh, if we hold all the other axis fixed and just change X1 and, and increase it by one unit, how much Y changes? But they also say this with caveat because uh, in the real life data, it's uh, so many times axes are correlated. So it's not that straightforward to just fix one X and make sure that others don't change. So that's also that. Uh, this is just a fitting uh, linear regression on two models, two predictors. Uh, th this it would be a plane in 3D, and these are uh, the residual errors which we saw for the line. Uh, so for adver our advertising data, it would be very similar. We talk about TV, radio, and newspaper. Uh, so in that case, if we uh, show the if they if we try to find out the best model. Uh, they, they don't uh, talk how, uh, talk about how to find the best model, but it's the no, I guess it's the normal equation that's uh, X transpose X inverse times X transpose Y. Uh, so it's now because there are multiple betas, it's, uh, it's in terms of vectors and matrices. Uh, so they skip it. Uh, but you know, once we do that, we find out B1 hats, B2 hats and B3 hats are estimated values. These are the coefficients which come up. Um, this the standard error, uh, and this is the state statistic. Uh, now, I don't have the table for that uh, in here, but they also show separate linear models fit like uh, sales with TV, sales with just radio, sales with just newspaper, and all of them showed that p value was very small if we just fit single predictors every time. But here we see that newspaper has very high p-value. So it's kind of saying that newspaper is not uh, significant anymore. And uh, one thing we can uh, say is that uh, radio and newspaper, if we just check the correlation coefficient, Pearson's correlation, they are highly correlated. So uh, the variance of y could uh, most of the variance could be explained by radio. And uh, th that's why when radio and TV both are there, newspaper is not uh, significant anymore. Uh, so alone newspaper would be significant, but when we have TV and radio, it's not significant anymore. So that's that. Wait, just to Sorry. clarify, I am. Um... Yeah, just to clarify if I'm understanding it correctly. So you mean if we just put like the newspaper in as a single predictor, it does predict the sales. But when it's included with the radio, because radio and newspaper are highly correlated, that's why and the variants are mostly explained by the radio. So newspaper becomes insignificant. Yes, and uh, uh, okay. so they also show single, uh, simple linear regression with newspaper, and it shows very small p-value, and uh, uh -huh. coefficient is also a little bit higher, uh, but if these two are included, then coefficient is very small, and p-value is also very small, very high, so in that case, it's uh, uh, not very significant. Mm, okay. I have a question about it so if we uh, remove newspaper and um, work on the 
model again. So the coefficients for TV and radio will change. But then how they will change, do you think? I mean, I am confused that what if uh, we take TV and radio as predictors? What if the coefficients turn out to be um, inappropriate? I don't know. Is it possible? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I I haven't tried that, but I can guess uh, if we drop a, a newspaper, uh, because the coefficient is already very small, uh, mm -hmm. there might not be large change in radio and TV right. in this case, uh, but there would be some change. Uh, but the, again, that's just my guess. Uh, if uh, someone else want to chime in. Yeah, I think we all, I, I might try it out. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't finish the whole chapter, uh, but there is a chapter where they do talk about uh, uh, you know, relative importance of each other. And uh, also in uh, one of the other chapter, I think sixth chapter, uh, we will go through the, the uh, I don't know, it's, uh, in one of the chapter, we will go through the backward and forward selection. Those are different techniques, uh, uh, but yeah, okay. I'm, um, I'm not sure about this data set, but usually when I run multiple regressions, like even though when, like usually we do it hierarchical means we include predictors one by one in, then some predictors mm -hmm. might be significant, but later on, as you keep on adding new predictors in, the predictors might become not significant. But usually like I don't drop the insignificant predictors, even though like mm -hmm. the p-value now is like, like more than 0.05 because overall the model fitness even by including the not significant predictors the model fitness is better so and if like we have this, many sorry yeah so like i don't know like like usually like to look into the model fitness i look into like the r squares those kind of like uh, aic bic those kind of fit so if it's like it improve the fitness that I will usually retain the not significant predictors inside the model as well. Mm. Like, does that help? Like, like, are you thinking of like, when it's like not significant, like then dropping the predictor? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose I need to think a little bit, a little bit more about it because Maybe I cannot understand very well. I need to work on it. So if I improve my understanding, maybe I can I can get it better. I suppose so. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess yeah. uh, in the regularization chapter, we will also see the L one and L two regularization. Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, that would automatically might drop, uh, especially for L1, might drop some of these mm -hmm. uh, um, coefficients. Uh, uh, and uh, sometimes I've seen where they mention that if uh, uh, the uh, it might show the fit better in here, but might uh, not do very well when we are generalizing, we are trying on uh, unseen data. Uh, so there is another, uh, I think there is something called adjust set R square. So that's also takes care of like every time you add new predictor, it uh, gives a little bit of penalty. So we are not comparing just the R square, but the adjust set R square, which also uh, takes into consider consideration number of uh, predictors. I see, thank you. Uh, so this was the multiple linear regression. Uh, now, then uh, we again come back to some similar questions we saw for simple linear regression. First question is, is there 
any relationship between response and predictors. That could be the case that all betas are zero and uh, there is no relationship. We just saw some relationship based on the sample. So how good is that relationship? So that for that, uh, the measure they try is uh, something called F statistics. So this TSS and RSS are old TSS and RSS. Uh, TSS is the uh, total sum of squares. So that's YI minus Y hat uh, square, uh, sum over all the data points. Uh, RSS is the regular residual sum of squares. Uh, P is number of predictors. Um, and uh, N minus P minus one. Again, earlier we were doing N minus two because now we have Pre predictors, we are doing n minus p minus one. Uh, uh, but uh, because we are keeping beta here, so th th that's n minus p minus one. Uh, so they say that uh, if uh, our model assumptions are correct, it can be shown that expected value of numerator and denominator uh, would be uh, sigma square. Uh, so if linear model assumption are true, then this would be sigma square. And if H zero is true, if all the betas are zero, then the expected value of this would also be sigma square. So in expectation, uh, if you take expected value of both, the F statistic should lie pretty close to one if H zero is true. If all our betas are not, not useful in explaining the variance in Y, uh, uh, the, the F statistic should lie very close to one. Uh, but if we try to find out value of F statistic for our last data, um, the last uh, multi linear regression model, it's around 570. So it's very large, then very large value compared to one. Uh, there was also a P value for this. So that there is also a table for this where we uh, check F statistic with uh, P and N minus P minus one degree of freedom. Again, I'm not very sure how we are sure that this would be follow as statistics, but they say it can be shown. And uh, if that's the case, then this just says that at least one of the predictor is significant. Uh, now, new R square value is uh, pre uh, pretty high compared to the simple linear regression. It's 0.897. And uh, earlier it was something around where is the earlier value? I, I, maybe I didn't, but it was something like 0.7 or something. Uh, but yeah, this is comparatively higher than that. Uh, <clears throat> now I was, so in, I, I think in our uh, online book side, there were only notes still 3.5. And I was adding notes afterwards, but uh, I couldn't reach more than this one. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not sure why that was the case. Uh, like there is only notes till this one, but yeah, this is uh, the max I got. So we can maybe go to question answers or um, anything. The, the notes are up to 3.5. Yes. Um, so I'm not very fast with this uh, latex, so it took a while to get those things proper. Uh, I think you will need to do a pull request. You will need to have create an issue then okay. add on to the then I, um the admin will approve it after they check it i'm not sure about the process <laughs> but you should like do an issue create an issue then do a pull request yeah i also checked the file history to make sure that it got removed in between but it doesn't show like that uh, like I, I could see the history and there was never 3.6 or 7 so I just created that, but after I'm done with this, I'll create a pull request. Mm -hmm. uh, means yeah, the whole exactly. week. I think we, I, I, I expected that I would 
I didn't expect I would finish this quickly. So maybe if there are any questions or if there are none, then we might. Uh... Yeah, like, I think like, let's just do the, uh, the lab next week. Then maybe we can go through the questions with the, with the one with answers. <laughs> uh, let me see if there's a link. <laughs> So we want to start with question, um, lab next. Uh, uh, there is still some remaining uh, uh, chapter or? Yeah, like I was thinking like we can start with lab then since we still have like maybe for 10 minutes, then we can end around 11.50. For 10 minutes, uh, we can go through the sound of the questions in a conceptual. Let me pause it. Um, the one in the ISLR linear regression, chapter three. I think we can go through the first three questions. <laughs> then we can continue from there next week. What's the link? Um, I don't know, I think. Let me, let me get the, uh, the link is mm, it should be pinned on top of the slack yeah Oh, so it's usually on top of this. Minus three point five. So sh uh, should I also share the questions or? Well, because this doesn't have questions. Oh, yeah. or I can just. <laughs> We have the questions in the book, right? Like exercises, yeah. conceptual, and applied. Yeah. Yeah. That's Or maybe we can just open up the questions or stuff. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so first question is describe the null hypothesis to which the p-value given in table 3.4 correspond. Explain what conclusion you can draw based on this p-values. Uh, so I think 3.4 is this one. Yeah, it was the, the the multiple regression table that you shared earlier. Yes. So. Sorry, I'm looking at too many places. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm so trying that's, to do it. That's not 3.4, right? Or that's... It might be 3.4 in the book. Yeah, Net three dimensional setting with two predictors and one response. Yes. Um, so null hypothesis for the three point four is the one that 
this table. This yes, is the, sorry, one, yes. the coefficient. Yes. Yeah, so eighty four. So that says, uh, like we uh, discussed in earlier, right? That the p values for TV and radio uh, is significant, and for newspaper, it's not significant. Uh, so we can. I don't know. This they say that uh, this shows that newspaper spending does not increase sales in presence of TV and radio spending. Um, but again, uh, also in the book, they mentioned that uh, this, I'm not sure whether this would be con constituted as causal sentence, but this, I felt like it seemed like that way. But uh, we can just say that we can't associate maybe the newspaper spending uh, increases any sale in presence of TV and radio based on this data. Mm, I agree with that. <laughs> mm, actually. Yeah, so I think it's similar to what you you said earlier where because the estimates, the beta estimates for the newspaper is really, really small. So like in the presence of like the TV and radio, so it, the newspaper doesn't really affect the sales. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's just another way of Praising it. I think in a uh, book, they give very good example about uh, ice cream mm. sales and shark attack. Uh, so ah. you, you can show association between uh, ice cream sales and shark attack. But uh, it's usually, they say that it's because in summertime, uh, because of the heat, people would go to beach more and would eat ice cream. So it's the... If we add the temperature, it uh, shows the actual relationship, maybe. Mm. Okay. Uh, so second one is, I think second one is about K N regression. So we might not, we might discuss that later. Uh, yeah. So if you just look at the answer, KNN is a non-parametric method. And I think this is the next chapter, which is chapter four. I think at the end of the chapter three also, there is uh, some discussion of KNN. Mm. Um, so uh, I intuitively understand KNN as uh, given the data, we try to find out some K nearest neighbors and whether it's uh, classification or regression, if it's classification, we find that K neighbors and try to find what's a majority class and just predict that. Uh, if it's a regression, we take some kind of centrality measure, maybe mean of all the values which are closest to that K closest value and uh, try to find that for regression. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's a, as it said, uh, there is no parameter to learn. It's based on data. Uh, the only thing we might want to find out is what's a good K. And uh, based, based on that, we would do the prediction. Okay. okay. Um, the third one is, suppose we have a data with five predictors. Um, there is GPA, IQ, uh, level would, would be one for college, zero for high school. Um, and X4 is the interaction term between GPA and IQ. X5 is the interaction term between GPA and level. The response is starting salary after graduation. And they show some beta values. So they say which answer is correct. It's a multiple choice question for a fixed value of IQ and GPA, high school graduates earn more on average than college graduates. So this again uh, would come after we discuss the categorical variable. Mm -hmm. um, you have GPA, IQ, then education, which is high school or college. 
So X3 is the high school or college one. Uh, so if it's high school, uh, X3 value doesn't matter. I mean, beta three value. But if it's uh, college, then X3 is one. So we add 35, which is the beta three value in our response. Mm -hmm. So there is an increase of 35. Um, 35 or 3.5? 35, right? 35, yeah. Yes. Mm, 35. 35, that's for... So there is an increase, but uh, the answer says uh, only... Sorry, Is this from different? Yeah, I mean, the number three, right, for the regression formula in the answer is slightly different from the book, isn't it? Yeah. Is this from uh, book one or something? Uh, maybe the, what should I say? The, mm, the first edition. edition one? Yeah, I yeah. think it could be because the value is different. Like yeah, there is no gender uh, in our yeah, and we do, uh, uh, there is no gender predictor in our variable, right? We yeah. have high school oh. level. I was like suspecting they just changed that level. Instead of yeah. college and high school, they just changed to male and female and use back the same estimates. Because it's yeah. like so, 35.001, let's see. Yeah, is this? It's the same, almost the same value. So for us, two seems correct, right? Let's see. Um, two, what was the question? So, uh, fixed values of IQ and GPA, college graduate earns more on average. Mm. Oh, we are almost running out of time. How about we just discuss this? I'll pre I also will prepare the answer. I'll prepare the concept and the lab. Yeah, I, and I think I, Rafa will be... be. Yeah, we we can do it together. Then we can discuss over the slide. <laughs> yeah, like we will try to prepare the answers for next week. Then maybe like you guys can also try out the conceptual and the lab by yourself before the meeting then we can discuss it during the meeting that and I'll <laughs> be better prepared the next time sorry about the end time like there was a little bit of loss of time uh, at the end yeah. but yeah. it was perfect like did I expect you to finish by the notes everything by today yeah. but it was perfect time <laughs> yeah so let's see one another next week then we will like all prepare for the conceptual and the lab yes. next week. <laughs>